hope we get it this time. Yeah. <laughs> um, Katie, Gwen, thank you guys so much for coming on again. How are you guys doing? Yeah, we are, we are doing great. Uh, we are excited to you know be on your podcast. Yeah, help you kick off the podcast thing, do your YouTube channel, which we're always a big big fans of. So thanks for having us. Yeah, and I appreciate the support you guys. I know have been um, huge supporters for me uh, throughout the years and for a long time. And you guys are uh, friends of mine as well. So it's great to have you on here. Um, and uh, I want to um, talk about Gwen's world record run. You just ran 100 miles in firefighter gear. So I have a lot of questions for you. Um, but first, did you want to just start off by kind of um, telling people about what you did and why you did it? Yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, last uh, April this year, we organized our first campaign with our nonprofit, Plan Positive. Uh, and, uh, you know, our mission with Plant Positive is to inspire people to become uh, healthier uh, and to, you know, basically improve their health and improve the health of the planet. Uh, so, you know, that first campaign, since I'm a firefighter, uh, a volunteer firefighter, uh, we, we wanted to do something in relation with, you know, that and uh, you know, the prevention of cancer. So it was a yeah, cancer, cancer prevention campaign where we partner with the American Institute for Cancer Research. Uh, so, so voila, the goal... <laughs> <laughs> that was a little French. What does that mean? Uh, you know, voila. Um, <laughs> It means... <laughs> yeah, just keep going. Just, voila, so there you go. You know, cancer prevention, 100 mile world record run. Voila. It means like, uh, that's, you, that, that's it. That's a wrap. Oh, okay. Just leave, you just know it. All right, a little French for us. Um, <laughs> it's almost like, uh, you know, that's it or something. But the, the plan was uh, to run 100 mile in full firefighter gear. And that was what would bring attention uh, on our message and the message was cancer prevention and how a uh, healthy lifestyle can you know reduce our chance of getting cancer and uh, you know the American Institute for Cancer Research has a very strong message where um, you know they say 50% 50% of most cancer can be prevented so we were thinking that that was like you know very powerful uh, considering, uh, you know, there is like half a million people dying from cancer every year. So, you know, that's a lot of people that, you know, don't have to die. And so, you know, we felt like that was a very important message and we wanted to bring it out. And, you know, that way to bring it out was to do something maybe a bit crazy that would get uh, attention on that. So, yeah, it was, uh, you know, uh, a great event that we organized here in Sand Point. And like I said, it was our first campaign with I want to be ten positive. So yeah. Was, so for all you guys like watching, you live in Sandpoint, Idaho, way up here, North Idaho, near Canada. Um, not a whole lot of people, but definitely the North Idaho community is up here. Not so much like um, of a vegan community or even a plant-based community, but we definitely have like a pretty large active community and community that is looking for healthier options, which is really good. Like it's, it's like trending hardcore. So we were able to kind of tap into that and try to support the people that want to start making healthier choices up here. Yeah. So, so dur during that, that run, um, we had like, you know, several ways to, you know, get the message out. So, you know, first, because we were partnering with the American Institute for Cancer Research, they provided us with, you know, flyers and some uh, information that we could hand out to the, the public that people would come and, and uh, you know, watch or even uh, participate in that event. Uh, also, because it was a run and we were inviting people to join, you know, there was kind of some inspiration from that for people to, you know, uh, be more active, become healthier. And we had food available at the at the event, um, you know, for for everyone to be able to run, you know, kind of like aid stations, uh, and and all these foods that were at the at the aid station, they were basically cancer fighting food, foods that were on the list of uh, you know cancer fighting food from the American Institute uh, for Cancer Research on their website. They have a list, 
And, you know, some people, you know, sometimes people can go and check out that list and maybe they think like, oh, you know, this food don't really taste, uh, don't really sound like that great. Like, I don't think I, I would like to eat that. Um, so we wanted to break that misconception that, you know, maybe this food are not really good. No, they can taste good and they can allow you to actually perform really well, you know, running 100 miles in, in full firefighter gear. So, and which is awesome about the food is obviously it's all just whole food, plant-based diet. That's what they're saying. And it's not just what they're saying with the American Institute for Cancer Research, but it's what the science shows and the World Health Organization. And it's definitely, um, you know, as you know, probably a pretty well-known fact now among the community of people who accept it. But then most of the people in the, I guess, Western world are kind of just choosing to live their life of abundance and eating other things. And that was definitely one of the aims of, of having all of these available foods, like Gwen said, was to just show them that plant-based food, whole food plant-based foods can be really delicious and easy to make and just simple combinations. Like some of the things that Gwen was eating that we had for um, everyone to eat was just like bean and rice burritos with guacamole yeah. and like pork whole, like we made corn chips out of corn tortillas, just things that like they know in their mind taste good, but they don't think is a healthy option right. because they're used to having it with cheese and sour cream. And like you were saying, like running, doing the event while running, showing people that these are foods that not only prevent cancer, but fuel your body for crazy endurance feats. Yeah, there is this, you know, misconception sometimes that maybe you're going to be weak or, you know, maybe, you know, like you're going to be sick or malnourished, but so we try to break that, that misconception. And what was great is, um, you know, like, you know, the public, uh, the people that came to that event, you know, it was like uh, they, they, they came from so many different backgrounds and, 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 and environment. And so we had like people that maybe they were like, you know, hunters or like, you know, this is the kind of people that we have here. Yeah. But the message was really well, really well received. And, and, and that was, it was received in a very positive way. And I think that's also like our approach. You know, we are not here to tell people like, you know, the, you know this food is bad for you. You shouldn't be eating that. No, we were here, we were providing good food. And we were like saying like, this is good for you. This can help you prevent cancer. And maybe you can include some more of that. It tastes good, so why not include it in your diet? So I think that way, of giving that message was very positive and people were like you know pretty happy and it was pretty amazing well first of all that's awesome you got an organization like that to help you guys out with this mission and this goal i'm sure that did a lot for your local community and just promoting plant-based nutrition and living a healthy lifestyle and how important that is for uh, cancer prevention and um you know, in some cases, uh, reversal and treatment as well. So that is so awesome, guys. Um, going into sort of um, the run, uh, really curious, how long did it take you to run that 100 miles? Um, and especially in firefighter gear, I'm sure that was really heavy. How long did it take you? So, um, you know, the official time was 28 hours and 43 minutes. So, but, you know, what, what's interesting, you know, kind of like, after the event and uh, analyzing what happened and you know I could see that basically during this 28 hours and 43 minutes um, only 22 and something we have spent moving. moving you know running okay and that's 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 a lot of time where you know I was not moving and I was basically at the edge station and the reason it took that long was uh, you know we had to deal with things that um, was so new, you know, you know, coming into that kind of, um, you know, challenge, I, we couldn't see like, okay, the, the previous guy that did that, like how did they handle, you know, running with the boots and how did they handle being hot in the turnout, you know, in the jacket and everything. So we had to like, Problem solve, you know, solve all, all of these problems <laughs> during, and that's why, uh, you know, it took so long. So, for example, like, you know, pretty often, I would uh, when I would get back to the to the fire station, the fire station was, you know, the head station where I could take some time and, and refuel, eat, drink. Uh, but I would have to put my 
my clothes, my turnout in the dryer because I was sweating so much that it was becoming heavy. You've ran a hundred miles before, right? So that that was nothing new for you, but it was just sort of adapting to having to carry all this equipment and and not to run like basically a hundred miles in like running shoes. You had to get used to like the firefighter boots. So a lot of it was like just adapting to the different gear, right? I did I did run 100 mile before. Uh, you know, I I, I ran two 200 miles before. So new things uh, in that in that uh, 100 mile was that the entire thing was on road mm. on you know pavement. Yeah. So so a lot harder on the feet. Yeah, which you've never done before. Uh, which the hundred miles that I did before were on trail, so much softer, and and of course you know the boots were like there's not much cush, uh, cushioning on the boots, uh, so you know running on the road plus not no cushion that was uh, definitely a challenge, right. and then the weight the weight of all of the gear you know the helmet yeah maybe go and break down for him what you were wearing because we had we didn't even so, really talk about yeah I had, I had the, the helmet turned out so it's the jacket and and the pants. Uh, and then uh, boots. So basically, the entire thing is about uh, 25 pounds. Uh, so you know, not only the weight. That weighs like more than my bike. That's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's you, like running oh with my your bike. Gosh. And not only that, like you know, with a helmet on. Like this is all. So he had to train like months in advance, just getting his muscles used to carrying this weird amount of weight in weird places, like on your head. You know, like what is that doing to your neck? Right, and or... it's and it's and it's all like <laughs> leverage. So you know, the helmet because it's at one extremity. You know, it's it's affecting the rest of your body. But same with, with the, the boots because <laughs> you know, lifting the boots at the end of your feet. You know, it's affecting everything. So um, you started training like in the snow. You started yeah, wearing yeah. Your boots like yeah. Wearing, I think I think you know, for here it was it was ideal training because you know running. With like snowshoes or you know stuff like that, like yeah, this is pretty um, funny. We were we were training in the winter, just having fun outside, and I'd have to put on like my snow. Like we have specific shoes for running in the snow that have spikes built in, right? And that kind of zip up around your ankle, and I'd have to get all geared up with my gaiters and think like, okay, I think I'm ready. Or snowshoes, and Gwen would just be like, he'd just pull out his boots because they're waterproof and they go up to like oh. halfway. Thing. So wow. you would just you would just be in your boots when everyone else was in all of this gear yeah. and you stayed dry and like totally fine. Like how long did you train just for, for this specific race? I basically trained, it was the same training that I would do, you know, most of the time because I, you know, I ran hundred miles, but I would add, you know, like work, like specific workouts. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would run with boots. I would, you know, do long run in boots or in the entire gear. Uh, but but really like you know the base of my training was still kind of the same. It's just a lot of running. Yeah. Uh, well, we and, ran and our last hundred miler in the end of September, and then Gwen took about two a week or two off, like barely any time off, and then he started running again. And when he started running again, I guess it was like mid October. Um, mm. You had the intention of like this run. However, then you didn't run all winter. Well, probably for like two and a half months, you didn't run because we were skate skiing. Yeah. So we were building endurance, but right. not with any impact. Yeah, um, so giving giving a, a break to our body mm -hmm. from the impact, but then still working on that base that I would be able to use, you know, later. And and I would say like also, you know, a big part of it was kind of like the mental preparation. So I have kind of like mm -hmm. a mentor. And it's uh, David Goggins. I don't know if you... I think he may have been on the Ritual podcast one time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I think I've heard of him. Yeah. So, you know, if you know, it's a great podcast. So, you know, I, I he, he was also on uh, Finding Mastery podcast. And, Joe Rogan. And Joe Rogan. So, you know, I, I just listened to him a lot. And, and he helped me, like, kind of, like, prepare mentally, having that mindset. And to me, that's, that's definitely the most uh, interesting part of this kind of challenge running 100 miles and that's a huge part of like the preparation and i think like getting into that challenge with the right mindset is way more important than you know coming with a proper training and to give you an example like 
two weeks before I ran, I was about to run, you know, 100 miles in five or five a year. I had knee, I had knee pain that came out of nowhere, and I couldn't run. I remember it was like, yeah, it was like less than two weeks before, and I went on a run, and after a mile, you know, I was running with Katie and another friend, and I said like, you know, I I have to walk, and so in my mind at that time it was very difficult. I was like, I can't run more than a mile because my knee hurts, and in two weeks, and it's not like I could change it you know because it was a big event people were you know people were, knew that that was happening we had like all of these things going around the media were talking about it we had like local tv yeah. yeah like you couldn't change it it was you know, there so, was a lot of pressure on you for the and, state. and and but you know then i was like you know i listened to david goggins again and, and it was like you know what like it's it's you know it's gonna anyway it's gonna be mental this thing is going to be mental, and if you know, if my knees start hurting, um, it, it won't be the only thing that's going to be hurting. So it won't be the de determining factor. So I need to stop focusing on that, and and I need to stay, you know, like confident that I can do it. That I have done things in the past that were really hard, maybe not as hard, but you know, uh, very hard, and and you know, like how he explained with like cookies in your cookie jar, like things that you did before that were really hard. Right. You know, I need I needed to like remind myself that, you know, last year I had 50 mile race, you know, it's shorter, but still I was, I was kind of injured. You know, I wasn't hundred percent. I took it easy and I, but I, I was able to accomplish it, you know? So all of these things that I was able to do in the past, you know, that gave me confidence that, you know, even if my knee is hurting right now, I'm going to be okay. And then, it ended up being like, you know, I took it easy for the two weeks before and 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 during the day, I, my knee didn't bother me. But, it, you know, part of it was also my mindset that, you know, I wasn't going to give myself any excuse for, you know, saying like, oh, you know, like I couldn't train the, the last two weeks. So that's why I'm not going to be able to do it. No, like if I start saying that, of course, I'm not going to be able to, say, to do it. Right. Or like, oh, you know, my knee kind of hurt. I think I feel my knee. I think I better stop. No, you know, so it was in my mind, I was like, you know, ready to overcome what would, what I would have to overcome. You know, you probably experienced that type of thing in cycling and not only in cycling, but we like to think that in ultra running or like anything really hard with endurance, you, you've come up with like these scenarios that you have to overcome and it's almost like a microcosm for your life. So how you deal with these situations in a race or in a big ride or a big run are kind of like training, mental training, like or actual training for how you're going to handle difficult situations in your life. If you if you look at it like that, it's actually like quite exciting. Right, right. I mean, me personally, like I've never, <laughs> I've never ran more than like eight miles in my life. So to <laughs> think about a hundred is just crazy i hope to do a marathon one day but um i've ridden over 100 miles on my bike um actually we like together we rode 100 miles a few years ago at an event called um the horrible 100 in florida it's like a huge cycling event um so like i i kind of understand what you're talking about with the the mentality aspect like there's certain moments where your your mind's just telling you to give up when really your body can keep on going so i i completely agree and like mental health is is a is is health it is health like just like when you um lift weights you're making your body stronger you need to make your mind stronger for moments like that so i 100 percent agree um and and can relate to what you were talking about if yeah. i can add like one thing like i think like one uh very big like component about that you know, is like, it's letting go of your expectations because you can't, like, maybe people, like, are going to think that what we are saying is, like, you have to be strong and, you know, like, you have to be okay with not being strong at some point in the race. And, 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 but if you know that that's okay, then it's not so much of a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you think, like, sometime, like, you know, that's what happened for the first hundred mile that I, tr I, I tried and I didn't finish it. And I came with that mindset of being maybe like overconfident and thinking, you know, I'm ready, I'm strong and I'm going to do it. And w in that moment where I got beat up, 
which is normal. But in my mind, I was like, oh my God, like, it's, that's not, you know, I, I can't do that, you know, because I wasn't ready to be like letting go of expectation of like, I should feel better than that. Or I should be faster than that right now. And it happens a lot when people reach like a halfway point in a race and maybe they're not at where they want to be like time-wise with their time goal. And I think what you're saying is instead of just giving up, just allowing yourself to be like, well, oh, well, that maybe that goal is out the window, but how do you regroup and find another thing to keep you going? Yeah, and that's okay. mental strength too. And, and not yeah. attaching to that initial thing. Cause if you do, you, you'll quit. Like yeah, you did at your yeah. first one. Like, it's about like, it's about being okay with like, okay, what can I truly do right now? Cause sometimes you just can't go as fast as you were planning. And that doesn't mean at the end, the result will be bad because maybe you are just having a rough time right now and, and you can come out of it, come out of it. And, and that's, that's the thing that I didn't understand until I was doing races that were long enough. Make me realize like I was feeling like, you know, because when I was doing like 50 K, you know, 31 miles races and I was always finishing, feeling so horrible. And I was like, how can I run longer than that? And running 100 miles, I still get to that point where at mile 31, maybe I feel so horrible, but I know that at some point, maybe it's going to get better. <laughs> it's and it's not like, sure, you know, it's, it's about being okay with like, right now, it really sucks, and maybe it will suck less, but if it still sucks, that's okay, you know, like, let's see what I can do right now. And uh, I think that's a big part of like being ready for, to do something hard is to be okay to like uh, letting go of your expectations. Uh, you know, you can have a plan, but be ready to, you know, improvise and see how you can do, you know, along the way. Right, yeah, just staying positive, always thinking on the bright side. It's so important for anything you do really in life. Like uh, even if it's diet, like if maybe you have a slip up once in a while, it doesn't mean like you should continue slipping up you should always think positive just say okay you know i i didn't do as well as i thought i would do but i'm still going to continue moving forward because really it's uh, the long-term effort that really counts okay so we talked about adapting to the different gear 25 pounds getting used to that um staying positive can you just um maybe just give us like the most um like maybe a sample of what like a, a week's worth of um, running training look like up, um, you know, building up to the event? Yeah, so for example, um, for that specific, specific event, it was going to be flat and it was going to be on the road. So my training had to be mostly flat and, you know, mostly on the road, even though that's not what I really like. So I would, you know, it, it would be building up like weeks where I build up mileage and it was mostly about mileage. Like, sure, I was doing maybe some workouts, you know, tempo, this kind of workouts. But I think the most determining fight factor would be miles because I wasn't going to be fast anyway. I was, you know, I just had to be able to handle the distance and handle the, the pounding. So uh, in my biggest weeks leading to that event, I was probably running like close from 100 miles a week. Uh, and with one long run, that would be over 30 miles. So, like, my biggest week, I think, was uh, finishing with a long run, 40 miles, in full firefighter gear. Uh, and, and I wasn't running every day in my firefighter gear because, uh, you know, that would be pushing it because it's not ideal, it's not made for that. Mm -hmm. So I would probably get injured if I would run with my turnout or, you know, in my yeah. boots every day. So it was more about like, uh, you know, slowly, uh, you know, getting miles done and then sometime getting some bigger run with the gear and then letting time, some time to recover. That makes sense. Yeah, it seems like some of the runs were just specific for just building up your cardio and making sure you're in good shape and other other runs with the gear was more of just getting used to it, building maybe some strength and balance with all of that stuff. It was um, it was very specific, and you know, at the at first maybe running in my gear, I would you know be like I would feel like the next day I would be sore, like maybe my back or maybe my you know hamstring or something that is a bit different. And when I run 
in you know running gear uh, and that was actually you know strengthening like specific strengthening for what I was about to do and it's crazy like I don't want to say like advice for you if you want to run a hundred miles in fire gear because I don't think anyone's gonna do that but Gwen is like an exceptionally strong human being you guys so there's no way in heck I could have ever even accomplished that and I don't want to tell you you can't do it but make sure that the challenge you pick is like something you truly want to do because the training was brutal for it. Like you had to be out there suffering on the road, which we don't like road running. So he would do road runs and I wouldn't even go with him because I couldn't handle it anymore. So if you guys are looking for something like that's going to challenge you, just make sure that you really love it. And I think that's also something we took away from this was like, okay, we're done roading on the road. Like the next big challenge, we want to make sure that the training for that big challenge is going to be something that we love to do every day. Right, right. Absolutely. And I can't um, not ask this because people are going to get on me, but like, how does your diet look like um, on a normal basis? And also, I want to know uh, what you ate during your run, how much, um, including uh, water and different fluids and things like that. So um, yeah, can you just kind of talk about your diet? Yeah, so, you know, my diet, like, basically, I, uh, you know, my, it's like bacon. my, my old time, uh, <laughs> bacon and eggs, right? <laughs> old sausage yeah, like the in bacon, there. The bacon is really good for the endurance runs, <laughs> like, like, that's a thing. No, that, that is a thing. Well, like, hell no. <laughs> my, my old time, uh, mentor for nutrition is definitely Dr. Gregor. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> if you want to know what I eat, you basically take the daily dozen. If you go on nutritionfacts.org. Uh, so that's why, you know, that, that's, that's definitely my target. We definitely uh, check off the daily dozen so every day. It's like nice. whole food, you know, plant-based. So for breakfast, you know, I would do like, we, we always do like oats with, you know, berries. And a green smoothie. And, 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 and yeah, instead of like, uh, putting like, you know, soy milk or almond milk, like we use actually a green smoothie as the liquid. Nice. So then we still get greens, you know. Uh, you know, with you know walnuts, wa walnuts and uh, flax seeds, flax seeds and ginger and turmeric and wow! I was gonna say you're definitely taking off a lot of boxes on the daily dozen there. Just oh, yeah, in yeah. the breakfast, yeah. we like yeah. knock out half of it. Yeah, and you know, people ask us like, we got a question today, like, is all you guys eat oatmeal? Like, we eat, we do eat oatmeal and smoothies, <laughs> like meat smoothies for every breakfast. We don't really change it up unless we're having pancakes. So. Even um, just to like answer the question, even race day for you, that's what you had for breakfast. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And, and it's definitely a good idea to like stick to that. Yeah, your body will handle the day better on a big day or something new, even if it's like just giving a speech or a presentation at school, whatever it is, or a big run, if you just stick to what you normally do. So go and eat our big yeah, I mean, I, and I, I know that that's definitely something, you know, on race day, we, we all know, you know, on race day, you don't do anything different, but in the same time, you're always tempted to say, you know what? I think like that might work today, you know, and no, no, like you need to forget about that. You need to give that up, you know, and you just do the same thing. And so, so yeah, that's what we do in the morning. And then you know, during the day, uh, you know, I really love uh, to make uh, bean and rice burritos. Um, we eat lots of stuff from the garden, salads, like we're yeah, whole salads, food plant based. Something that right. I do, uh, you know, that, Specifically, since like Dr. Gregor came up with this like vegetable smoothie, I've been a huge fan, probably number one fan, and I do that every day. And I think that has been a huge that then seriously made a huge difference in my recovery time, way uh, more than anything that I've tried before. Even from like going from like you know um, meat eater to vegan or like you know um, drunk vegan to whole food, like adding that smoothie that, I mean, it's gross. What's in that? Yeah, I'm really curious <laughs> to know about yeah, this it, magic it, smoothie. I, <laughs> yeah, I, no, I had it, to chug one down like 20 minutes ago and I almost threw up. So oh, it wow. is horrible, but but now I'm used to it and I, I'm, I'm just doing it because I know it, I'm going to feel amazing. So basically what I do is like I do a full um, blender. We have a, you know, Vitamix that kind of, you know, shows you the size and that would make two smoothies. And uh, in it, I I make uh, I put you know one orange, I put uh, some celery, I put beets, and carrots, uh, carrots, lemon, lemon and, juice, and like any yeah. Uh, so 
orange and lemon juice are the only thing that will maybe make it taste okay. A little the rest, sweet, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. And then and then I put like really anything that I have in the fridge as far as like vegetables, so you know carrots and peppers and uh, yeah beets, celery, uh, you know broccoli if I have broccoli or, or, or uh, cabbage. Um, Did we say tomato paste? Yeah, tomato yeah, paste yeah, to or like to, oh, to, wow. tomato paste? Yeah, tomato tomatoes paste. are kind of essential. Yeah. Um, as per Dr. Greger actually has um, on nutritionfacts.org, he has a recipe for this smoothie that tastes much better than the version. Yeah, I kind makes. of tweaked it and, and made it a, a bit even worse. Yeah. Like, worse tasting. <laughs> like five oh times gosh. more kale than you're supposed to. Uh, so yeah, and then and then we put you know ginger again and turmeric and and Mustard and flax seeds. Uh, you know, mustard powder if we have, and then and then the last, and then I blend it all, and, and I add water to make it liquid, and then the last step is adding the kale, and we are so lucky we have fresh kale from the garden, and I go pick, you know, a huge like like something that would be big like that, packed with kale, you know, like that, nice. and I just like blend it up, and so then it, it, you know mm. it's it's brown and it's really thick. Um, and then that's it. I just you know, shake like, it down. That's your magic juice. He swears <laughs> is, by that I mean, stuff. And you know, like sometimes we always want, you know, we want to know, like you know, maybe goji berries. Maybe that's the thing. Or maybe it is like um, this, like special essential oil from somewhere on earth. You know, <laughs> right? No, the truth is like it's the gross stuff that is in your garden that you didn't want to eat. It can, it doesn't have to be so expensive. Like. We actually uh, we freeze a lot of our stuff, so we we buy it in bulk. We know we go to you know Costco, and we we buy you know during the winter when we don't where we don't get anything from the garden, uh, we go to Costco and we freeze these huge bags of greens and you know all kind of veggies yep. and we just freeze it and and then we just in the blender we just put it in the blender like these huge bags of kales and stuff it's frozen and then you just pick it and put it in the blender so by by shopping like that at costco you can make it uh cheaper cheap, like yeah. we, we we can't we can't afford um to buy you know everything organic and you know everything local uh so so you know that's what we do and 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 sometimes people get confused about like you know it's expensive and i can't afford organic so i shouldn't just eat the conventional um, so I think that's something that to, uh, for us is very important. It's like, you know, if you can afford organic and so because of that, you are not eating it, then I think that's the wrong mindset. You should eat it. Even if it's conventional, it would like the, the benefit will, uh, you know, override the, the, the risk, you know? Uh, so, so that's, you know, during the winter, that's, that's what we do. That's kind of our, our every day. And then, race so I, I had the breakfast same breakfast but then during during like I have hard time to actually eat um, more like real food even though I'm going like pretty slow but the thing about that specific event was like I was really hot and and the heat uh, is is affecting your digestion uh, my, my digestion so I was you know drinking a lot I was actually taking uh, electrolyte pills and I like the electrolyte pills from you know hammer nutrition uh, because the what I don't like is when I put stuff in my water and then it gives you a taste yeah. and you can't drink that for like 28 hours. Right. So I drink drink easier like plain water or if I can like banana water. We actually did that um, where we 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 had the luxury of having a blender. So we would just blend bananas in water, make it really liquid, not like a smoothie, but very liquid. And so then I get hydration. And, and I get, you know, I get liquid calories. And uh, we have a we have a recipe because lots of people want to know what that banana date water like recipe is. We have that recipe on our website on our blog. So if you guys want to check that out, you can check that out. Yeah. Another thing Gwen does that's easy and kind of equivalent, um, liquid calorie wise, to banana water. If you don't have a blender or if you just prefer the taste, would be like actually vanilla sweetened almond milk or rice milk which seems pretty weird but you're getting liquid calories and it's a lot cheaper than buying some of the sports stuff and yeah the sports stuff may work but sometimes people have really adverse like reactions to specific sports drinks or they can handle it for so many hours and then they can't 
or if you mix the sports drinks with food, then you can have really bad stomach problems. So we found that like if we just do you know rice milk or banana water, you can still eat other food and it won't cause any type of weird chemical reaction yeah. in your stomach. And I definitely like to um, you know change it. Like I can't do the same thing for 28 hours for mm -hmm. drinking. Sometimes I would just go back to plain water if I just don't feel that great. Um, or you know yeah I would do that. Or I would. If really I need, I'm deficient in calories and, you know, the, I would squeeze a gel. So we have these great gels that uh, are made by Scout. Uh, it's, it's, it's a brand like Scout Backcountry. And they make these gels that are like um, date-based. So that they are like, you know, really good. And we just squeeze them in the water bottle, you know, shake it, and then you still get some calories. It depends if you can drink it. And for, for eating, when I would get back to the head station, like mostly... It would be uh, oranges and watermelon. That was my go-to for the entire way, especially because I was hot. So that was something that just felt good to eat. Um, but then when you were out there on the run, we would make sure that every half an hour he was taking an electrolyte pill. And then the next half an hour he was taking some sort of like calorie source. So um, shout out to our sponsors, uh, which is Scout Backcountry. And if anyone is looking for like an organic whole food nutrition company they're amazing they make these bars that are i mean we really believe in them we reached out to them and we love their products so we're just very honored to be able to represent them but you were actually eating those bars the whole time yeah, so yeah. which is cool because sometimes like you really get sick of a certain thing yeah, but yeah. they have enough flavors no, and, and i think eat them. it's also because like they are like you know they are like very simple you know four ingredients five ingredients date based you know so, pumpkin seeds and dates and then yeah. like uh, so this kind of food, like, uh, you know, uh, you can I, actually I, can, I can actually sustain yeah. it. I've never heard of that brand. I'll definitely, um, look them up cause I'm always looking for, uh, good products like that. But you know, I can't even like eat gels anymore just because I, you guys mentioned this too, but like sometimes like with your digestion, they just don't go down well. I basically just do bars now. Um, yeah. I feel like they digest better. Maybe they have a little higher water content too. Cause like, that's the thing with gels is like they dehydrate you and, uh, re your body requires more water after eating them. So I'll have it like maybe if I'm at my lim absolute limit, but I usually go for bars too. So 100% relate to that. Yeah. Know? No, check out, uh, scalp because they, they have great, so the gels, they don't, they don't sell them yet. Uh, hopefully that they will be out. Uh, soon because everyone loves the gels um, that tries them but the bars but yeah, they, they are, bars are, are really 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 good and you can get them at rei but they're and then in other places but and, they're portland based yeah, so it and, might be kind of hard and basically them. like these bars like we, we were making this same kind like with like you know simple you know five ingredients many dates and and we were making that before and so now we just don't even have to make it okay so i kind of want to talk to you about um the instance that you had, I believe, it was over 50 miles, maybe three quarters of the way there. Um, you had an instance where things just got really tough for you. Um, do you want to kind of go into that? Um, what was going through your mind and what you did to be able to finish the, rain, or the race and succeed? Yeah, so basically leading to, uh, it was, it was uh, my lowest point was at my around like, you know, 69, 70. And leading to that. I would say the le the last uh, six miles before that, uh, I was my my heart rate was starting to go up, and I was starting to breathe uh, more and at the for the same pace. So basically, up to that point, I had been running the entire way, and 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 that's when there was uh, a, a very distinct change from being able to sustain it to suddenly it was an effort that I just couldn't sustain. It was a hard effort. I couldn't make it easy anymore. And, and my heart rate was going up. So, and I just, I guess I didn't catch it in time. And I, I, I actually said it. I was like, you know, I, I have, I'm, I'm breathing harder and I just didn't take action. And uh, so then I, I got to back to the head station at mile 70. And, and maybe and, also and, and because Katie I was... maybe can, can say yeah. that part because at that point I was um, 
yeah, I was not very like aware of what was happening. And maybe part of the problem too was that he didn't have like a consistent person around him the whole time to be able to see the change. And because we constantly had different people coming in to support and run, different pacers, different crew. And I was really the only one that was able to see from start to finish or from start to this point. And I had just taken a nap, like the only little period I was going to sleep, I was going to try to get two hours of sleep. So I wasn't able to see that maybe Gwen was taking like a dive in his energy and all of that. Yeah, it was like 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. at that time. Yeah, and so he came back to the aid station and before he even came in, some of our friends came in and just said like, he's not good. Like, sig- like kind of like the hand gesture like across the neck. Like, he's done. He's done. Like, he's dead. Wow. But like, they, they didn't want to say it out loud because they didn't want him to hear. And he came in just like very delirious, um, not even really able to talk and sat down for a minute like he always does but then i could tell something wasn't quite right and you didn't look very good and then basically to make a long story short he had to actually lay down on the ground and i was asking him questions that he just couldn't answer he couldn't talk to me and he had to lay down like that's the only thing he could do um so we put him down on the ground and everyone around like all of the volunteers and all of our crew just like silent no one knew what to do because no one has none of that crew had ran a hundred miler or participated crewing one. And I think it actually takes that to realize that this is okay. <laughs> Cause to them, like this was insane. They were really thinking like, it's time to bring them to the hospital, you know, like for sure. So we were at the, that, that it's, you know, we were at the fire station. So we had like Medics. very experienced, <laughs> you know, uh, firefighters in like, oh, yeah. that I've seen a lot, but, yeah, they they saw that they had to bring me to the hospital. Yeah, they just thought it was going to be the end. But like, oh, this is such a bummer. I think they were all just kind of like bummed. Like, man, I guess it's I guess it's the end. Like, it's not going to do it. But okay, so then what happened? Like, I could I picked up on the vibes and I told Gwen like, okay, you have five minutes to nap. Like, I'm waking you up in five minutes, and I might have given him like seven minutes, whatever. So while he was napping, like right right as uh, he was about to wake up. As I was waking him up, I very intentionally decided to change the energy, like in the atmosphere around what was going on, because I could tell everyone was scared shitless and like didn't know what to do. And that wasn't going to be supportive in Gwen finishing. So I just had to tell everyone as I was waking him up, like, okay, you guys, this is what's going to happen. Um, I'm going to wake up Gwen. He's going to get up. We're going to get him like changed because he was like, couldn't even, we didn't even take off your clothes. I don't think we maybe put your drop your jacket in the dryer. Um, he's going to change. He's going to eat. We're going to get him ready to go. We're probably going to take 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. And then you guys are going to walk. And he's going to finish this thing. And like, he is going to come out of it. Um, and you guys are going to walk for like 30 minutes. And when he's ready to start running again, after that 30 minutes, I'll let him decide that he will start running again and he will feel good. And he's going to come back and that's, what's going to happen. So let's do it. And I woke you up and everyone was just like, okay, like, okay, let's do this. Like it was a total game changer, you know, and it took that like very intentional, um, like tone of voice too, and like me me setting the energy for the second half of the event to really change everything. Cause if we, we, you know, if you woke up and everyone was like, I don't know when you're not looking so good. Like, no, it would have been game over for sure. Right. Yeah. Cause like what we were talking about right before, like that positive mentality, it's just so important and not just, for you, Gwen, but like also for the supporting staff, which is you, Katie, and just setting yeah. the tone, like you said, and just setting a positive environment where you can kind of recuperate and and just come up with a plan on how to get back on track. Like, yeah. just reinforces and, what we were talking about. Yeah, and I actually learned how to do that from Gwen in my first hundred miler because I had a low point, and you know, he told he told me something that was so important, and I'll never forget. It was that, you know, okay, you're having major stomach issues right now and you have to walk and we're just going to walk the rest of the the remaining 80 miles because it was at mile 20. Um, And that's okay. Like we're going to walk the rest of the way. So don't panic. Like we're going to do it. We'll finish. So that's kind of what I told them. Like, you know, if he can only walk, that's fine. It's a world record. He's setting a world record. So even if he walks it in, it's still going to set the world record. Um, No one's ever done that. And of course, in my mind, I knew he'd start running again because I know I know that's how it works. But um, 
you know, that's the thing, like letting go of expectations and just be like, okay, what can you do right now? I think he can walk. And so then the cool thing, I like, to finish the evolution of the little event of his slow moment, he uh, every time he comes back to the aid station, he writes on this. He would write on this whiteboard the miles he was at, um, and then who was with him on that lap out and back as a verification for the world record. We had to have witnesses. So I asked him when he came in, like what mile he was at and who was with him, and he couldn't say that to me because he was so out of it. And then after I woke him up from that nap, that nap, you know, the whole thing maybe like you know 10, 15 minutes later. When I woke him up from the nap, from the, the nap, he was in this crazy mindset, like the, um, like he had like some sort of brain trauma and didn't remember. You know, he totally blacked out and he didn't remember any of that. And so he thought, kind of in his mind, I don't even know if he knew you took a nap, but in your mind, it was like you just walked through the door again, which was really cool. So it was like you reset the energy, but you weren't. You just were like, okay, it's mile this, it's mile this, and like, you know, let's go. I'm ready. So that was pretty cool. I yeah. mean, it was an incredible experience to yeah. see you so, come out of that. You know, then like <laughs> the, the 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 after that moment was very different. Like I was running before up to that point the entire way, and very then steady. and then after that it was a mix of you know walking and and running. Um, so the, the the last ten miles were definitely like the longest ten miles I ever done, and I, I at that time I was kind of feeling bad because. You know, we kind of told there was many people for at the end. You know, maybe 20 people uh, for or like, like 30, 30 going with us, 30. Yeah, you know, and and uh, I felt bad. I felt guilty that we invited them to come come run with me, and I was just walking. You know, like, and I was walking kind of fast. You know, as fast as I could for the last 10 miles. I was feeling really guilty because we invited all these people to join us and, and run with us. You know, we came, we told them, hey, come run with us. I will be really slow. And I ended up being so slow that it was actually a fast walk. Uh, so I was kind of feeling, you know, guilty about that. But people were just really happy and really excited about it. Uh, so then I remember, like, when people would be like celebrating, like, you know, six miles to go. And in my mind, I was like, that suck. Like six miles is a long way because I'm so slow. I mean, that six miles is almost another two hours at, at the pace I was going. You know, like it was like. This is not time to celebrate for me. At that point, every step were so painful. You know, every pressure on my feet were like, you know, killing me. Um, so, so it was it was definitely very hard, and I wasn't in the mindset where I was you know, celebrating, but I was focusing on the present, and that's why when people would be celebrating like hey, six miles, it was too far for me. It was like. Uh, too much of a projection, you know, like I needed to stay where I was. My goal is to be here and to move forward. And that is my satisfaction because right now it's so hard that just being able to do that, I'm, I'm you know, I'm happy with that. And, and, and it was hard at that time. I was so spent physically and mentally that, you know, knowing that I still had six miles to go was uh, at my, you know, 94 was just, it's too much. So I had to keep myself, you know, it's right now. I'm doing this. I'm moving forward. And as, as long as I move forward, I'm getting closer and I'm going to get there. I don't care about when. I just, I, it's going to be as fast as I can. I'm being, I'm going the fastest I, I can, but it's right now. It's like what I can do right now. That's so inspiring, man. The way you like, like turn that around, like you were pretty much, like, I kind of want to say, like, a zombie at, at that point. Because I saw the video you guys put up, the vlog of the day. Oh, my gosh. And it's amazing, like, how you turned that around and really just stayed positive, kind of took it step by step and made it to the finish. Um, I also want to talk about something you said. I'm just paraphrasing here. But you said um, that you had the option of quitting anytime you wanted to. You could have called it quits. But uh, cancer patients have no choice but to keep fighting. Choosing to do that challenge for me was, you know, volunteer for suffering. So first it was, it was my choice. And then, you know, I, 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 I could stop at any time. I had head station. I had people. If I wanted at any point, if I wanted to say I'm done, I was done. Someone would give me a ride back and I was going home. It was over 
and I was going to bed and I didn't have to suffer anymore, you know. So, but we were doing this for, you know, cancer prevention, but also, you know, trying to be, uh, you know, with people that have cancer, you know, trying to, um, you like know, in su support. In support. And, and so these people, they have a fight that, you know, they didn't choose. And, and uh, it's a very hard fight, you know, uh, it's very hard mentally and it's very hard, hard physically. And unfortunately, you know, they don't have that option of saying, you know, it's too hard, I'm just going to quit, I stop, I don't want to suffer anymore. They don't have that. So, you know, I think it was very important. And that's why, like, for me, during that event, like, quitting was not something that it would not be, like, a, a decision that I would just take like that. It was, you know, very, very important for me that if I had to quit, it was because my, you know, my life would be in, you know, in, in danger or, or, or something that was, it was not a joke. And so for quitting, I actually had, I set up a bell and that again, you know, from my mentor, you know, David Goggins and the Navy SEALs and stuff, they have this bell, this quitting bell. And if you want to quit, you have to work to the bell and ring the bell in front of everyone. And if you would ring the bell, then, you know, you didn't have to suffer anymore. You could go home and you could be warm or you could be, you know, in the AC or whatever, you know, like you could be more comfortable. Uh, but you had to do that action. And that, that, that action uh, was just making it more real that quitting is not just a thing that you say is not a light thing to do. And so there was this action behind quitting, you know. There was, during that event, we had many people coming and, and see if I wanted to quit, uh, you know, and, and I didn't have, it was just, I would quit because it was kind of hard. To me, it would be disrespectful, especially because it was a, it was a campaign for cancer, you know, so it would be disrespectful of all these people that have a, a fight that they didn't choose and they can't quit. And I would have to work and ring that bell in front of everyone. So, yeah, I think, and it's something that now I, I will always remember in anything I, I do is that, you know, quitting is not a light thing that you, you do. You know, you have to consider it seriously before to, to do that. Perfect. Yeah, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. Congratulations to, to what you did. Do you have any tips for maybe um, people who just want to get into running or if even if they're already into running, how can they get into, like, ultra running? Do you have any tips for them? Yeah, yeah, so... I think my number, like the most important thing, and I re like, I remember from a sailor that I used to read his books. He was a French sailor, really famous, and he used to say, you know, there are two kind of sailors. They are the one that go at sea, and they are not ready, and they are the one that are in port, and they will only go when they are ready, but they will never go. So, so those know, are the, the two types. Yeah, the story is that if you wait until you are ready, it might never happen. So to me, it's like it's about doing it. You know, it, it, there is yeah, like there is not a ready state. And if I take like the hundred mile distance uh, or like running hundred mile in firefighter, yeah, like there, there is it, it, there isn't a, a a point where you feel like you know what I'm ready. I can do that, you know, it's, it's, it's over what you could accomplish only physically. So it's about doing it. You have to go and you have to do it and you have to overcome and you have to, you know, like be okay with like letting go of your expectations. So for anybody, you know, when you start running, it's not about like, you know, do I, do I have the right, you know, shoes or do you have the right watch or, you know, how many miles I need to run? No, it's about like, you know, go out there and you, you're going to make mistakes. Like, you, you're going to, you know, you're going to fail, but fail is positive. You know, you're going to fail, you're going to realize, you know what, uh, I actually don't have the right shoes. But that's okay. I just figure it out by doing it, you know. So now I get better shoes. Now I get a watch, you know, to know how many miles I go. Uh, I, I actually ran too many miles and I got injured. Now I, I'm going to do less miles and I'm going to research it. But... If we wait until we know it all to get into it, then, you know, that might be just an excuse for maybe not getting into it. So 
to me, it's just about you know uh, going out there and doing it and doing mis and, and doing mistakes and in in uh, realizing it and then you know correcting. And maybe if I could add one quick thing is if you're interested in running, maybe if you're a runner, if you're new to running, if you can get off the road, um, it is a different sport. Trail running is not running. They're two totally separate sports. Um, I even have a hard time saying I'm a runner because that's associated with road running, which I do not enjoy. So if you guys have listened to this podcast and you're like, wow, how can these guys run 100 milers? I hate running. I, I do too. If running was running on roads, I, I we hate that. So if you find yourself like, yeah, I wish I could run, but I just hate it. Um, that's pretty normal, I think, because running in town and stuff is just horrible. So if you have an option to get on some trails and in like some sort of nature, even if it's um, New York, like the the park in New York, any anywhere like where you can get in some nature. If you find that you can get out on trails and you're running every day, and then if you still love it, then go for ultra running, and then you can keep pushing the time that you're out. And just like Gwen said, don't don't wait till you're ready. Just like keep go, going further and further, and find some crazy ultra running trail friends and join Facebook groups and the communities there, you know, and, and just keep exploring. And really it's about exploring. So even if that's uh, wherever you live in a city, just find new ways to explore and do that by running. And it's probably going to be more fun. Uh, we're big fans of like ditching the watch and ditching like cell phones while you run, because if you're only concerned with the pace, you know, it's like, why are you actually running? So definitely maybe ask yourself those questions. And if you really hate it every day, ask yourself like, why am I doing this? And maybe it's not the right time or it's not the right sport. And maybe you can come back to it later in your life. But we do encounter quite a few people, um, even within our running community, who don't like the runs. And it's pretty bizarre because it's like, well, why are you doing it? Um, and then it's just a, a weird cycle. So uh, we think it's the greatest sport in the world. But <laughs> if you can get into it and if you can get out there, because really it's just about exploring and playing out in the mountains and on the trails and in nature. So we just really are eager to share that experience with, with anyone. So I guess that's my advice. Yeah, and get it's, out there. again, it's about like uh, not having expectation. I think that's something that can be helpful for people sometimes. Like they think that, oh, you know, if I go running, I should be maybe running eight minutes per mile or nine minutes per mile or whatever, you know. And then... If you just start running, maybe that's hard. And and then you're trying to hit that goal is actually you're running hard, and then you find that you can't run. Like it's hard to run, but uh, you have to realize that for us it's easy to run. So you know what is your easy run? It could you know, be walking. Because that's 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 the thing that you can sustain. I mean, it's the same thing with any sport and cycling and and swimming. Like. If you think that you have to go and swim and, and do, I don't know what time, 400 meters, and then it's so hard and you are out of breath, out of breath and, and you just lose the, um, the interest because you are, you are going hard all the time and it's not sustainable. So, you know, you have to like take a step back and see like these guys that cycle like fast all the time is because that's easy for them, you know, like that's not hard. They don't go hard all the time. They just go fast, but for them it's, it's easy. So, what is your easy? Mm. Go out there, enjoy, and 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 don't don't worry about the yeah the watch, but go by the feel. Yeah. If that's easy, you know, it's, it, I think it would be better to say to people like go easy uh, most of the time, and maybe sometime if you want to work out, go hard. I'm not gonna tell them like go seven minutes per mile. Maybe it's way too hard for them. You know, no, go by the feeling. You know, go easy most of the time how once a week and learn, you know, listen to your body. And, and I think that would be a way more like sustainable way to do it. And then if you like it, then you're going to start running crazy distances and do crazy stuff. Yeah, no, those are excellent tips. I mean, it's relative for everyone. Um, you can't really tell them, you know, run seven minutes per mile, but I 100% agree with you. Um, you should totally love the journey, love, the sport that you're doing because if if you're not then why are you ultimately doing it i want to ask you guys what is next for you guys any if you have any plans for the future um to do other 
big runs like this and where can people follow you? So since last time we spoke, I uh, got some exciting news. We have developed uh, quite a bit on what we're going to be doing next with Plant Positive and with us and um, Gwen's trying to get a job as a firefighter. So on a personal level, <laughs> awesome. Um, I'm ramping up my uh, plant-based whole food, like vegan baking scenario. So I do that on my own, like just bake at the farmer's market. So I'm ramping that up. Those are personal goals. That's going strong. We're having a lot of fun. But as far as plant positive goes and what's next for like big crazy shit we're doing, um, next summer we are setting up a campaign where we are going to be searching for 10 women who are going to take on a journey of a lifetime with us. We're going to be running the Pacific. Well, I shouldn't say running. Run, running, fast packing, hiking, through hiking the Pacific Northwest Trail from Glacier National Park to the ocean, which is 1,200 miles to the Pacific Ocean. It's an amazing scenic, national scenic trail that goes over, um, because it's an east to west trail, it goes over mountain ranges instead of like the Pacific Crest Trail, which goes along mountain ranges. So it's very difficult and very beautiful. And we're going to be um, taking on and seeking out 10 women who want to join us for this journey. And it's going to be um, all about women empowerment and being outside as a woman and what that means to us. Gwen won't really be there. He probably will be filming it and stuff and helping with logistics. But it's going to be me and my friend and then 10 of you guys. So 10, 10 women. Um, the trail's broken up into 10 segments that are definitely a lot shorter than the 1,000. You know, like anywhere from 100 to 200 miles. So they're all very different segments too. And it's just going to be a journey out there and experiencing all of the things that will come up along the way, uh, all of the different wilderness areas. And the Pacific Northwest Trail has a mission to just promote and protect that trail and to grow it into a little bit more of a well-known trail. So the mission um, with the nonprofit will be to help them accomplish that mission and also to give back um, to different women that might not have the opportunity to do something like this on their own and maybe they've never done um, a backpacking trip or a through hike, which I haven't either. So we're kind of seeking women like that, who maybe this is a little bit outside their comfort zone and maybe there are certain barriers um, that come along with being a woman, like a woman, like not having as high of an income or having kids or just being kind of scared because of the social misconceptions of what it means to be in the wilderness as a female. Um, so, you know, dissolving some of those barriers and doing it as a team together on the trail. So, it's yeah, it's definitely an exciting evolution because we have just kind of figured out that that's what we're going to be doing over the last month or so. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, the weather window, though, for doing some huge trail like that is, is pretty narrow. So it's all going to be weather dependent and all of that. Too. That's, that's awesome. Where can people find more information about that? Uh, event and um, how can people connect with you guys? I would say the number one way is our Instagram, Plant Positive Running. Also, plantpositiverunning.com is our blog, but then the nonprofit website is plant positive.org. And here shortly, um, in a few weeks, we should have more information up about that campaign and how anyone can submit an application or you know try to be involved in whatever way they want to come join us. Definitely, and I'll have all that in the show notes where people can find that and connect with you guys. Hey, uh, thanks for coming on again, guys. Um, I think we got it this time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> definitely a pleasure talking with you guys as always, and congratulations again. And um, yeah, hopefully we can do this again in the future. Yeah, well, yeah, thanks so much. You know, um, if we have like a couple of more minutes, but I remember like uh, when we first like found you on YouTube, uh, you know, like that was a few years ago, and and I think like what was really great uh, about uh, watching your videos is that it was all you you would always give I think um, a different uh, point of view on things, and you were never like I would say like biased, uh, like you would always like. Um, like, Try to understand maybe yeah, other like, perspective. Like give like different perspective. And to me that was really interesting because uh, you know I was we were watching at that time, we were also watching um Joyan Ryder that is definitely a different style. Right. And so, you know, like 
uh, I think like well, and just other like vegan YouTubers, which yeah, it that, can be that, just so one sided. Yeah, and, and you and, don't approach it with an open mind. And so you know, just wanted to say that you know when when we like you definitely helped us along um, our journey, along our journey to 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 you know to to be like to become who we are today. We definitely inspired us on in that way and help us to be more like have an open mind, you know. Oh. So. Well, geez, thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I was like, whoa, what is what I'm going to say here? But it's so true. It is so true. Thanks. Yeah, I appreciate that. You guys have been supporting me for many years, and um, I'm so happy you guys even reached out when I was back in Florida and that we met. Because, um, yeah, it, I mean, I don't know. I always try to look at things from, uh, I guess, non-biased as I can and try to be understanding of people because everybody comes from different backgrounds. People grow up differently, and so I try not to be as one-sided. Even if the majority says one thing, I always just try to take a step back and kind of look at the big picture and try to, you know, be considerate of of all sorts of things. So um, I'm really glad that that's you know coming through the screen and onto um, ev everyone watching my videos and everything. So um, thank you guys so much, and um, I I really want to recommend people head on over to your guys stuff because i mean what you guys are doing with running and um advocating a plant-based diet and positive mindset what we talked about um which is something i've been uh, i've been looking into like how to stay positive and and all about that so um yeah i mean thank you guys one for the support and uh definitely head on over to katie and gwen's channel and um connect with them as well well cool and thank you again obviously for supporting us back by having us on your show that's an honor so yeah definitely awesome. we'll definitely do this in the future guys so don't worry um you'll see more katie and gwen <laughs> <laughs> all right okay all right guys well um thanks for chatting and uh, we'll see you later